Hey, hi ho, and howdy, everybody. My name is Shannon Shook, and today I'm thinking about talking about something just a little bit extra. Gray waves. Dun, 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 dun. That's not how that song goes. I set this whole thing up like I was gonna, I was gonna sing that song and it was gonna be a funny joke and I was gonna be like, "Hey guys, sorry," and then go explain why I'm sorry. And then I, I didn't even do the song right. I, I have it forever locked in my brain box, and yet I still fucked that up. But you are an ocean's great way. Uh, hey, hi, ho, and howdy, everybody. My name is Chanel Shook. Uh, and first, before we even get started, I want to really quickly apologize um, uh, for last week, uh, very specifically uh, the last two days of last week and the beginning of this week. Oh, God. Um, because uh, we didn't have videos there, and that's simply because I ended up getting sick. If you follow me on Twitter, which you should, but you don't, but you should, you shouldn't, there's, you don't get much out of that, but, um, if you do follow me on Twitter, you will know that, uh, I ended up getting really, really sick at the end of last week, and, uh, that bled into the weekend, and into this beginning of this week, uh, and that sucked, but, yeah, that's why I couldn't get any videos up, um, but that's okay, because we're here now to not make up for that, because I'm gonna just, I'm gonna bring even more shame yeah, no, it, that, yeah, that all sucked, but, you know, it's okay, we're here now. Uh, l luckily, one plus, one positive about being stuck and confined to a bed, vomiting your brains out for a weekend, means you finally get to finish Fire Emblem Fates Conquest after about a year and a half of taking a fucking break off of it. And you know what? Was fucking good. Looking forward to more of those. I'm all about it, but you know what? This isn't the Fire Emblem Fates review cap. But if you wanted to see one of those, maybe I could make one because that'd be fun to do. Point is, this is the Ruby review cap extra of <clears throat> I'm, just, I'm dying of Volume Five, Chapter Eleven. More the merrier. And you may ask yourself, wait, is this that episode where Shannon at the end of the episode had a major heart attack and was like, oh God? They're gonna do it, aren't they? I'm gonna I'm be sad. And you know what? It is that episode. It is that episode. Anyway. Um, yes, this is episode number 11. The More the Mayor, also known as the episode where uh, we make kebabs out of waifus. Um, but th isn't that all of Ruby, really? If Cinder has taught me anything, this is like her thing. She should open a kebab store. Just be like, hey... Want yourself some roasted toasty pira? Here you go. You want yourself some weiss kebab? There you go. It's so good. It's delicious. Put it in and around your mouth. <sighs> I don't even know what that means, but it probably sounded questionable. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to talk about the episode. Um, first and foremost, obviously, I liked it. I'm, a f I'm fucking me. If you've watched any of these videos before, you know that I... It's not a single fucking episode of Ruby I don't like. Um, there are things I'll complain about. Very quietly. Away from the microphone so people can't hear me do it. But, <laughs> I suppose they're technically there. Um, I mean, it happened in the last uh, video we did. Anyway, point is, more the merrier. So, you know, this episode, luckily, is confined all really down to one... Yeah, it's all in one location. Um, which is kind of nice, because... Uh, jumping about, um, uh, it all takes place here at Haven Academy. Uh, the episode opens up with our boy Crow and his his army of younglings, but not like Jedi younglings because Anakin's not gonna murder all of them. They might die. Oh God, they might die. I seen this episode. They might die. Um, but but not killed by Hayden Christensen, and that's. That's for the best. I'll take a I'll take a spear to the back from Cinder as long as it's not the man who talks about sand too much. 
who does it. Please don't, Vader. Um, anyway. So, you know, they're all making their way to Haven Academy. Because they're going to go meet up with Leo. Definitely not obviously a trap that we already know is there. So, I don't know why I'm trying to pretend that it's not a trap. You've seen the episode. Or you know it's a trap. You know exactly how this all goes down. I haven't been subtle about the fucking spoilers towards the end of the episode at all. But the point is, it's, it all goes wrong. Um... Anyway, so yeah, Crow and the gang all make their way to Haven Academy, and this is one point I do want to simply talk about, and it's the moon, because everyone wants to talk about the moon for this episode, because it looks fucking awesome, because the moon always looks awesome, but we see it from a different view this time, and it looked really cool, and that's all I have to say about it, but it looked cool, and that's awesome, and I like it, and it's awesome. Um, anyway, so yeah, Crow and the gang, they all work their way, and this is everybody, everybody, we got the whole fucking kitten caboodle. And they're all making their way into uh, Haven Academy to meet up with Leo, who's in this big room. And it's the room in the in the intro where everyone's fighting. So it's not very subtle as to I wonder where they're going to fight. Um, so they're all getting in there, and then Leo's standing up top. So, like, why did you bring your weapons? As he puts his weapon behind his back. Can we talk about Leo's weapon too? It's a really, like, it's a really cool idea. Number one, it seems like a pain in the ass to use, and like, it's not a very good weapon. But it's a very cool idea of a weapon. It's almost like it. The the first thing I thought of, um, I guess, which doesn't make sense because now that I think about, it, I don't think Leonardo da Vinci was a painter. Like, I mean, he drew stuff because he invented things and he had to draw the pictures of the inventions. I don't remember him being a painter. So maybe my whole story just completely falls apart. But I, I always viewed it as it was like a... What the fuck are those things called? I used to know things about art. I used to have talent. Believe it or not. And then that all went away. Why? Fuck if I know, but I would love for it to come back someday. <clears throat> anyway, it's got like, it's like one of those little circular doodads that you have on your hand when you're painting. You have all the different little pastel paint. I'd pa pastel. What, point, he's got all the little paints and you dip your brush in there and you're like, come here, Esau, let me do you down. Um, he's like one of those. I thought it was really cool. It swaps between all the different dusts. You can shoot versions of dust and stuff. It's cool. I like it. Again, not the most practical of weapons. It seems kind of like a pain in the ass to use properly. Considering how long it takes him to use the fucking thing in, in the fucking episode, I mean, it's a terrible idea, but it's cool. Um, but, you know, so they all get in there, and then again, he's all like, well, why, why'd you bring your weapons? It's so crazy, and they're like, we're huntsmen, dude. Why would we, we, we always, why would we not do that? My weapon is like my baby, and I always bring my baby to a fight. Um, <laughs> sorry, they don't know it's a fight point is they all go in there and they're having a little chat with leo and he's being as obvious as physically fucking possible which again i can't complain about because it's fucking leo and i mean we've established that leo is terrible at everything that he does um so you know he's up there talking silliness and it's about it's a little ways into their conversation that yang specifically ends up noticing a raven up in the corner doesn't take long to immediately go, I, hey, I know what a raven is. I've met one of those before. I think I came out of one of thems before. Probably not out of raven as she was a raven. That would have been weird. <laughs> that, that would have been a hell of a day at the hospital. And I don't need that image in my head of a, you know, a human baby being birthed in any way, egg or not, out of a raven. And I just, I, I don't, my stomach has stopped wanting to have food ever again. Um, point, <laughs> point is, they're, they're there and she notices and is like, oh, sh mom, is that you? Is that the mama I used to knew? Um, and then she's all like, aha, it was me, when when Crow's all like, immediately shoots at her. That was also a thing that I found that was interesting. He, within, like, an instant, the second, um, Yang mentions, uh, like, hey, mom, is that you? He immediately pulled the trigger, which I thought was, I thought was, that was a good touch. Like, obviously, he's, he's, he's not having any of that shit. 
he knows if she's around, something's up. What if he was wrong? What if they were wrong, though, and that wasn't Raven? It was just a poor little bird? He just blew a bird apart. What kind of animal man are you, Crow? Bird killer. Is that... <laughs> I was going to say, is that cannibalism? But no, you idiot. He's not... That raises a question. <laughs> is... Is it cannibalism if he eats a crow or a raven? If a raven eats a ra Asking the real questions here on the Ruby Review Cap Extra. Um, point is, he shoots at her. She jumps down, does her little magical transform back into a human. I'm a real girl! And then she's right behind Leo. And then she starts talking shit like, Hey, you gonna shoot me? Actually shoot me. That's just ridiculous. Come on, boy. You gotta get your aim on. You... you Come on, little bro. Uh, which actually is actually a good point. She actually does mention that she's technically the older sibling. I think they're still twins, right? If I'm not mistaken, the, they do mention that the Bronwyns are twins. But she's still technically the older twin. For those of you who don't know how twins are born, they do not come out at the exact same time. That would be even more painful I twist imagine admittedly don't know not there maybe it's easier maybe you just like that's just it's so much that you just don't even notice it at that point like I'm off in uh, Tahiti somewhere this isn't happening to me I didn't just birth two baby humans out at this there's a lot of talk about birth and babies let's let's move on um anyway a point is so she's the older sister which I thought was a cool little thing to name drop it's not what that is. It's not what a name drop is. Point is to, to mention. Um, and, you know, they're all talking for a while, and it pretty quickly comes down to, like, Crow going, okay, so this is obviously some bullshit. You two are together. What does that mean? Um, shit, does that wait? No. Oh, shit, this means you're with fucking Evil McEvil, aren't you? I, I, I know it. I can sense it. Um, and uh, they're talking for a while before eventually... Raven comes down with the rest of the gang and they're talking there and Ruby ends up pleading with Raven to, you know, join them to work together to uh, help stop Salem and all that. You know, being all protagonisty and shit. Um, and they're talking for a while and she eventually ends up pulling out, you know, you sound just like your mother. To which everyone went, oh. <gasps> Can we finally learn about? And that's when Raven, of course, opens a portal and Cinder fire blasts her fucking ass across the goddamn room. Because, of course, we can't talk about Summer. Won't you just let me talk about Summer? I just, I want to know. I want to know what love is. Insert the rest of the lyrics to that song that I do not know. Um... So yeah, no, she opens a portal, which uh, which actually comes back to another thing. I think I mentioned in a previous episode, going over the, um, I think it was, yeah, I think it was in like episode five when we learned, four shit, when we learned about um, Raven's um, power, uh, her semblance, uh, went over like the, who she has um, bonds with to allow the portals and I mentioned I think I threw it away like oh because something later on maybe she has one to another and I would assume again what I was going for was Vernal because Vernal is with them and that's why Cinder and Mercury and Emerald can all come through and join the fuck you team um this is because she's got a portal to Vernal which makes sense They're, they sound like they was close they's tight there's and then, um, love, love, no, that's not true. That, maybe, I don't know. What if Raven was getting a little a bit of spring on the side? Mmm, delicious. Um, what? Uh, anyway, so, you yeah, know, they all come through, um, and that, then it becomes a showdown Wild West style, like, boy, you got all you, I got all me. Let's fight. And Crow's like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do this because you're all, maybe maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe we just talk about this. Maybe we don't. Maybe y'all calm down. Kids, you need to stop. You guys are freaking out. I don't like that. Because, um, uh, of course, Crow at this point 100% realizes that, um, yeah, no, uh, Raven and Leo are totally on Team Salem. Um, which he's not particularly a fan of, also ends up realizing that obviously, well, considering all of the huntsmen who are murdered in 
Mistral, pretty damn likely that Leo was the one who gave away all their positions to um, Salem and the gang. Uh, I believe Cinder specifically points out um, Hazel and Tyrion being the ones going off on a murdering spree. Um, and and Cr Crow's not happy about that. Um, he's not. He's, he's not a fan of that at all. He's so not happy with the murdering of the babies. But they're not babies. They're adults. I would assume Shiro was not a baby, and I would assume Heather Shields was either considering she had a baby. Why are we talking? <laughs> I've mentioned babies like twenty six times this episode. Maybe I'm having a kid. Who knows? Maybe I'm pregnant. I didn't. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe that's why I was thrown up. Um, point is, <laughs> um, yeah, point is eventually, you know, obviously they're working for Salem and all of that. And it's at this point that um, Cinder, after talking the maddest of shit to everyone because she's fucking Cinder, um, that Jean starts to kind of lose it. Which, again, is kind of understandable. It's something that I know a lot of people have been waiting for was the day that he ends up seeing Cinder again and just going like, Yay, you rotten fucking bitch. You done kebobbed my waifu, and I don't like it. I know you're trying to start a store, but you know what? We don't sell that shit here. We sell tacos. And you don't stab people to make tacos. So you can't work here. Um... You know, point is he actually is, uh, <laughs> I'm joking, but it's a really emotional scene. This whole episode, that's actually something I do want to give uh, huge uh, shout-outs to. Again, I always love um, giving specific shout-outs to voice acting people because I am a voice actor and a terrible one. So whenever I see someone who's good, I'm like, holy shit, you're awesome. Way to make me look so much worse. Huzzah for you and also fuck you. Um... And that uh, honor goes to, um, most specifically this time, uh, Miles Luna as John because he fucking rocked it this episode. Like, he's he's so emotional. He's just so fucking pissed at this stupid bitch who's off often people left and right. He's just, he's not, it's not okay. How broken do you have to be to, to be the kind of person that you are? And I thought, I thought it was great. And it made it all the more depressing when Cinder inevitably said, "Who are you? I don't fucking give a shit. I don't. I don't. I, 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 am I supposed to know who the fuck you are?" Um, which, while savage, is also just a little bit of a dick move. And um, while I can respect it, I also must tell you, ma'am, to go fuck yourself. Um, that's about the point that uh, Jean loses his shit completely and goes in for the fucking kill. Something I did, I forgot to mention that happened earlier because it's it's Cinder, Mercury, Emerald, um, uh, Leo, and Raven all up front, and then shortly after uh, Cinder reveals herself, uh, Hazel and um, Adam both end up. Well, Hazel reveals himself. Adam is outside planting bombs all over the school uh, with his little infiltration team going in to blow shit up. While Hazel goes in there and proceeds to want to beat the shit out of people. I mean, not want to, because he's still got that, like, I don't want to fight nobody thing. Don't come at me. I don't want to have to break a baby. Stop it, Brent. Champ. Fuck. Um, but point is, he ends up going in and he's like, I got, I'm, no one's getting in. No one's getting out. Forgot to mention that earlier. I'm terrible at my job. Um, so, you know, it's at that point that John completely loses shit and goes in and starts fighting Cinder. My money, as much as I love the boy, is not on him. Um, he goes after Cinder. Ruby ends up going after Cinder to protect John as well, but Emerald ends up stopping her, so ends up becoming Emerald versus Ruby. Yang and Mercury, which makes sense. A little bit of a little bit of a hey, I I know you. I don't I don't like you, but I know you. Now let me throw you. See what I did there? It rhymed. Um so those two get ready for a fight, and then Vernal gets ready to go up in a fight against Weiss, which obviously means Weiss is fucked. Um, though Raven does specifically point out to Vernal not to use her powers, like, she ain't worth it, this bitch ain't nothing, and then Crow's all like, bitch, sister, come at me, I'm, I'm over here, caca, motherfucker, and 
Crow and Raven go at it while throwing down some sassy-ass words of family. You have a very skewed perception of that word. Still one of my favorite lines. Um... <coughs> Dying. Um, so, you know, and... Oh, uh, yeah, so they're, they're all doing that. Um, uh, who else? Fucking Ren and Nora then go after um, Hazel because he's there and he's like, I don't want to fight you. He's like, well, yeah, we don't want to fight you either. But you're with her. So you're going to kick your fucking ass. Once again, my money is not on them. Um... Yeah, no, so they're gonna go off and fight Hazel, and in the background while that, that's happening, Oscar Ozpin makes his way up the stairs leading up to where Leo is, and obviously he's gonna have to have a chat with his his old his old boy who's gone a little r rotten over days. Um, and it's up there that uh, at at first Leo, oh shit. First time we actually realized, too, that Leo's a fucking Faunus, which I thought was a really, really cool touch. It's one of those things where, like, never once did I even, like, think, oh, yeah, he's probably a Faunus. No, just never even considered. Even though, like, um, Cinder even flat out refers to him as a lion at one point. To me, it was just like, ah, oh, she said, aha, play on the Cowardly Lion and his name and all that. But, you yeah, know, he's literally a lion Faunus, which I thought was a really cool touch. Um, it's, it's always interesting is, like, one of those things you never really think about until it gets shown off between the different characters and whatnot. I, I liked it. I thought it was interesting. Um, also, also kind of goes to show that uh, regardless of uh, Faunus or not, you can still kind of end up relatively well off in life with the right circumstances. Because, I mean, hell, Leo, again, the head of an academy, that it probably so is a position of power. Good, good for him. But also fuck him. Um, anyway. So yeah, no, uh Oz Oz Osger goes up to confront Leo, and Leo's all like, hey, I don't know what you what you doing, little boy, but you better back up. I don't wanna have to hurt you, but I'm gonna and Oscar's like, mm, 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 mm. Cause I was gonna be like, Oh, I'm gonna say something, but he doesn't actually say anything. He just walks up to him all menacingly like and that's when Leo's like, fine, I'm gonna have to get you. I'm gonna have to sp sp spend 27 seconds over here loading up my magical dust madu and then shooting at you. And then Oscar catches the the dust and with and, <laughs> and Oscar uh, blocks the attack with his aura and ends up pulling out the cane, which obviously at that point Leo's like, oh, I have fucked up now. Um. And Oscar, he ends up calling him like, is shit, is that you, Ozpin? And Oscar's like, nah, fuck that. And he starts kicking his ass, which I thought was really, really cool. It was cool seeing the little kid kick some ass. And it, that was a cool thing. Um, having that be um, Oscar going in there and kicking a little ass rather than making it be just Ozpin um, leading the charge against Leo. So, you know, he... I would say that they fight, but they don't. Um, Oscar beats the shit out of Leo for a while, and then Leo ends up um, dying, like me. <clears throat> no, um, he ends up getting caught on the back foot and ends up having to be like, oh, I don't, I don't understand, and this is like, she's already done this, and oh, God, and wait, you're still a little boy. You couldn't have this thing for long. You're not that strong. You're not even Ozpin yet. I can take you out. I can give you to Salem and she'll have to free me. She'll let me... Which, number one, dear any human being or Faunus or no matter what you are, don't ever have that mindset going into a villain league. Because you will be wrong and you will be very sad when you die. Because you will know that it was your fault. Um, yeah, so he ends up pulling that off, and like Oz is like, "Dude, what the fuck happened to you? you used to be, you used to be cool, Dad. <laughs> I learned it from watching you." Um, and uh, Leo ends up getting ready to fight, and Oscar's like, "I don't, I don't know what do I do? What the fuck do I do?" And Oz pin, I mean, well, there's only one thing to do, young Padawan. Kick his cat ass, which he uh, proceeds to do, um, and that's all happening in the background. Then we switch over back 
to um, the rest of them uh, very specifically. I think there's a small section with um, uh, Weiss and Vernal fighting next, which there's not too much to say other than Weiss has a very... Uh, it's, it's, it's keeping her on the on her toes the entire time, and the biggest issue is Weiss has a has an inability to remember that she has other abilities other than summoning. She focuses on it far too much and ends up getting the shit kicked out of her, and ends up losing her aura by the end of the little scuffle between the two of them. Um, and then it switches back over to um, uh, Jean. Then it switches back over to Jean and Cinder, who are duking it out for a little while. And by duking it out, I mean... John's getting really, really angry and upset, and Cinder's just like, bitch, do I look like I give a fuck? Um, it's somewhere in here, too, that um, Ruby and Emerald have a little bit of a confrontation, and she ends up mentioning again how, how she cares, or Emerald ends up mentioning how she cares about Cinder, but she couldn't give less of a fuck about Salem. And all in the end, her allegiance lies with Cinder, and without her, eh, she couldn't give less of a fuck. She, she owes everything that she has to the Fire Throne bitch. So now back to the Fire Throne bitch. Uh, so those two are fighting for a little while, and again, Cinder just continues to toy with him over and over and over again. Ends up throwing out the line of like when Weiss loses her, or is like, "Hey, you gonna you gonna let her die too? Or are we gonna let girlfriend number two go? This time you don't even get a kiss. Um, just cause she a bitch. Um, not not Weiss. It's talking about Cinder. Fucking nut. The hoe. Um. <laughs> anyway, so you know those two are going, and they keep going back and forth, and eventually, why? Um, Jean is just like, stop messing with me, dude. Just, just stop it. Just fucking stop. And it's that point that Cinder's like, okay, she breaks her glass sword that she uses to fight, and then switches out for the fire sword, and then they, they go at it. And it's at that point that in the distance, Ruby sees what's happening and ends up having um some PTSD esque fucking flashbacks about. Pira back on the on the fucking um, tower doesn't take it well and ends up for fear of losing Jean ends up releasing her um, silver eyed powers only for a moment though just because Emerald ends up shutting that shit down immediately but it is enough to stop Cinder from going for the actually going for a real attack uh, and causing her pause to which Jean uses um to his advantage to actually go in for the fucking kill. Which, one, I have to give huge props to Jean because he went, he fucking went for it. He was like, I am so fucking done with this shit, I'm a fucking kill ya. I'm a stab ya in the goddamn eyeball face. The problem is, is he stabbed at her eyeball face and didn't swing. You should have took her head clean the fuck off. Boy, get that, get that arm out. Get, like, you practicing for fucking the major leagues, my boy. You can't be stabbing. Cause then she gonna dodge, and that's what she did. And then he fell, and she's she's like, "Bitch, the fuck did you did you just, good sir? Did you just try to stab me? Because I think I'm going to set you on fire because of it." Um, and while she's showing him down, he ends up having a he gives off the line. It's, it comes back down to the giving Miles props for fucking voice acting this episode. He did so fucking good. Ends up delivering kind of the speech of um. In the end, if I die. It's worth it. As long as they, the, the the real heroes out there can do what they need to do, if they can save the day, then my life is worth it. It's kind of a similar version to, I assume, what Pyrrha must have felt towards the end of all of that, of her showdown with Cinder in her life. As, as long as I, c I can do, as long as I can make a difference, as long as I can buy them time to save the day, then then it'll have been worth it. Which, in the end, is kind of how that thing with Pyrrha went. Even if she didn't really know that that's how it was going to go. Um, in the end, she managed to stop them, not because she beat Cinder herself, but because she bought Ruby time and gave her reason uh, to unlock her power so as to beat Cinder. Um, and in the end, I, th I think that's kind of the same mindset that John has is like as long as I can do that then it's that's good enough for me if I have to die then so be it which obviously you say that to a villain the first thing they're gonna go is oh so killing you isn't gonna make you hurt but killing them would hurt 
cool. I'm gonna kill them. So what the fuck does she do? Exactly what the fuck you'd expect her to do. Exactly what any villain would do. Exactly what I would fucking do if I was a goddamn villain. Which makes me sad, but it's also so true. Um, and that's obviously go for the people that he cares about so that he can hurt him for her for him trying to hurt her towards the end there. Um, even if it was revenge. It's always, it's always a sick game of revenge. But whoever is really getting that revenge. Where was I going with this? Point is... Cinder ends up leaving Jean there, pulling out a spear, walking across the room, and giving the daintiest little toss directly into Weiss. And that was fun. And also the end of the episode, because Rooster Teeth is mean sometimes. I love them dearly. They're my fucking favorites. But god damn it, Miles and Carrie. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's the end of the episode. Is the 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 uh, the, the kababening of um, Weiss, which is it was it was fucking terrifying, dude. Weiss is that was the thing is, I remember watching the original or the first season and hating Weiss. Like she's just such an uppity bitch, the entire fucking season. Even towards the end when you start to understand why and you start to kind of feel for her, you're still like, yeah, but you're still fucking wise. And then season two came and you're like, yeah, you're a little bit better, but I mean, you're still a sassy little muffin. You're just more of a, yeah, in the end, you're more of just a sassy muffin. And then volume three happened and you're like, oh, you're kind of awesome. And then volume four happened and you're like, you're the greatest character that's ever been invented. Stay with me. Love me forever. Don't ever leave. Please don't ever get stabbed by a fucking fire thrown bitch. And then volume five. And now we're here. Um, so, you know, it's, it, was, it was rough. It was rough. Uh, I did not, did not take that super well. Definitely might have teared up a little bit. And in the end, it was kind of the same thing that happened with Pyrrha, because I never actually, I didn't cry when, when Pyrrha got got. But what did happen is I just sat there in stunned silence and just couldn't say anything. I didn't actually cry until Crow um, mentioned to Ruby that, yeah, no, she was actually gone. It was after he said that that I actually started to cry. But I, the entire time before that, I was just sitting there dumbfounded in silence with my fucking mouth hanging open like a fucking baboon. Not that baboons have their mouths hanging open. That's not even remotely accurate. I don't know why that was my choice. It's, um... I'm dumb. Um, yeah, no point is that was the episode. In the end, it was it was a really enjoyable episode. Um, the, the whole... This volume in particular, again, gets... It does get a lot of complaints from people. This is kind of one of the episodes where it gets a lot of complaints, considering, um... One of the biggest things being um, the way fights are delivered this season in particular, uh, a lot of people have problems with. Again, for me, it didn't really bother me. Um, at least not in a way of like, oh, it actually makes me upset. It more just means like, well, that would have been cool to see, but I'm totally fine with it. I, but then again, it's kind of... It, it's, it's kind of one of the... some. That's kind of person I've been my entire life. Um... Uh, well, I don't know if that's fucking true, but um, the kind of person I've been for a long time now um, has been, um, well, okay, so maybe I'm not going to get the exact thing that I want, but the fact that I'm getting something I like, it might not go the exact way I intended or the way I thought, but that's fine. It's, it reminds me of like, um, um, for, for Pokemon fans out there, the last year or two, the last few years in particular... Pokemon fans have been super fucking ridiculous when it comes to the release of uh, new games and information about them to, like, a, a extent that it pisses me off. Um, I, I think back on, like, when they announced um, Ultra Sun and Moon um, most recently, and people lost their fucking minds because it wasn't Pokemon on the Switch. In my mind, it was just like, oh, that's cool. We're getting a new fucking game. That's awesome. I didn't even know if we were going to be getting a new game this time. That's awesome. I'm all about it. I don't give a fuck what it is. Just, I, I want it. 
and so many people went apeshit. And it was the thing is they got legitimately upset with the people who released the with the people who make the game because like, oh, you guys fucked us. You guys, you guys don't really care. You don't. <clears throat> and it's like they almost have like the mindset like you lied. And it's a similar line, mindset that I sometimes get with Ruby a lot, especially with the way people sometimes treat uh, Kruby and Miles and Carrie and them. It's almost like almost like a statement of, like, you lied. Like, you actively went out of your way to fuck up, or you actively went out of your way to make things worse for us. Which isn't the case at all. And it really, really upsets me when, when I see people with that mindset. Don't get me wrong, I'm never, I, I, I'm not someone who thinks you should always just accept everything and be like, well, uh, what you get's what you get, you don't ever throw a fight. You're allowed to complain every once in a while, just don't go complete apeshit, don't be like, well, this thing is the worst thing I've ever fucking seen, it's complete and utter fucking garbage. When like, no, it's really, really good in a lot of aspects. Again, I, I think I mentioned this last episode, is volume 5 in particular what it gets right it gets so very right and yeah it has missteps and it has issues but people who look at it and like it's it's the worst fucking volume ruby's ever had it's complete not a garbage why ruby is dead like i i can't understand the mindset that people have about and it's not just about ruby it's about all sorts of different things the amount of times I've come across a fucking video on YouTube is like, this thing is dead. This is the shittiest game ever. What happened to this? Why? The decline. The fucking fall of this company. Or something like that. And the only thing I think is, okay, so you had one thing that you didn't particularly connect with? So your your goal here is to then shit all over the people who made it? I Like, I don't understand. I've completely devolved on what we're talking about. I was here talking about fucking volume f fucking 5 episode 11 and now I'm here talking about the shittiness of fucking fan bases. <laughs> Bo point is, I liked this episode. I liked this volume and I'm going to try and talk about some of the other episodes here soon. <laughs> I want to say thank you all so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, do those things. Uh, I... I don't know why you like it, but shout outs to you. Um, again, I'd like to apologize for not having videos out uh, at the end of last week and at the beginning of this week. I'm sorry if the, the release schedule for the next, for the rest of this week is a little off too. I don't know. I, again, I'm still not feeling the greatest and I'm kind of coming off of this and trying to figure out things. I'm trying to figure out the best way to get started on Review Cap Extra Ing. Um, um, some new shows as well. Um, I, I would very, very much like to get started on Darling and the Franks, um, and other shows. <laughs> that's, that's the only one I keep pulling because it's the only one that I know off the top of the head that I really want to do, but there's other ones in particular. I just don't know what ones I want to start with. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and also I have another project in particular that's coming up here that I've been working on for about a week um, and it's it's probably the biggest thing I've done and I'm so scared that it's gonna be shit and that people are gonna hate it I just I again I don't I don't know man I'm I'm not good at what I do and it worries me and I'm concerned it's a video I've been wanting to do for like a year and a half now and now that I'm actually trying to do it I'm just going like it's gonna be fucking terrible you'll never be as good as everyone else it's gonna be shit everyone's gonna hate it you should just quit your job right now it's not even a job you don't even get paid like it's <laughs> I don't know it's, it's just one of those things um anyway I'm gonna see if I can maybe record some also I'd like to apologize for the few people who uh keep up with my video game stuff either the video game stuff has been very frustrating um, again, sickness and just motivation, things like that. It's, it's been a problem. I don't know. Point is, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm going to try and do a episode, um, review cap extra on the next few episodes here soon at some point, And I hope you'll enjoy them when I do. Toodles, doos, and lemons, everybody. Oh, bye-bye.